hello everybody and welcome to Weightless Wednesday races here in the Midwest F1 League. This is one of our, uh, I'd say, experimental things that we've been uh, keeping track of recently. This is just going to be one of those you know, weekly races, given our waitlist of drivers who doesn't have a uh, full-time seat, uh, an opportunity to get out on the track and race against some of the bigger names here in the Midwest F1 League. Okay, so here he is now into the famous parabolic curve, and it looks like Soreska has gone and DNF behind him there. We go along with Peter D.H., actually the other Aston Martin. Oh yeah, he's just come off the, uh, the scarry corner there and gone and binned it in the wall. Unfortunately, sometimes that sort of thing happens. Both him and Big Pack uh, gone off there. That's not necessarily what you want to see at all. See if we can get another look at it. Yeah, I think he's just pretty much hit the inside curb there and Oh, and taking a bit of a spill, and that, that, that curve will get you even in the dry. That'll happen. Goes to the line of 131.5 for Jose Miguel. That one looks solid, and is he going to try to top his best time uh, as he heads into Renafilo here? I'm not sure he will. No, no, he won't, as he's spun it in the grass and has done some excellent advertisement work for Pirelli tires there. Ooh, that's going to be close there. Wow. Nearly a bit of a conundrum there, but no harm, no foul. Jose Miguel on his timed lap now. We'll have to see what he can do. Maybe close that gap to El Majaco. Maybe overtake him. Threw down a really solid lap uh, on his first attempt as he, has in, as he heads into Renafilo corner. This is very important here. And, oh, man, he's not going to get that right at all. Into the grass. Uh, the gravel, rather. And that's probably done in the rest of this lap. I, I gotta say, that corner alone uh, pretty much determines how the rest of your lap's gonna go. The incident there that looks like Peter DH has spun it round. KD35, almost entering a bit of a traffic jam here, and oh, that's not going well at all, that has. Ooh, and that's a hefty DNF there for KD35, and I, I tell you what, a bit thankful as he's done it in a not terrible part of the circuit as well. To the inside of the... in between the Lesmos corner. It's not bad at all, actually. It could be a lot worse. That claims five drivers so far in this session, three of which did not get a chance to put in the time. Here's El Majaco into Raja. Oh, and he hits that sausage curve very heavy and then invalidate his laps. I tell you what, the sausage curves there, uh, and on this track in general, that will that will really, really hinder a qualifying and race effort, uh, as we've seen with Max Verstappen and the Lewis Hamilton debacle there. Don't think it was a purple sector one. I'm not sure it's going to be a purple sector two either. But so far, he's kept it nice and tidy, and wow, if he saves this, that'll be brilliant, and he did. That, I gotta say, was some great driving uh, to keep the car out of the Armco barrier. Man, I, I tell you what, his line was not the best through Rajia there, and he went over the second sausage curve very heavy. You can see the car probably launched well, about a foot and a half off the ground, as these will tend to do to you. Oh, and he's going to do exactly what KD35 did, and he's going to lose it off the curb on exit of the first Lesmo there. Not what you want to see. And it's lights out and away we go here in Monza for Weightless Wednesday. And I think Dirty Boy Jackson got a pretty solid start there. It's going to be three abreast heading into the first quarter. The Red Bull of KD35, the McLaren of Jose Miguel, and Shelly the Turtle all there. A little bit of contact between Majaco and Jackson. Jackson's going to get a three-second time penalty for corner cutting, although does stay ahead of Majaco. A little bit further back, here's Jose Miguel alongside Tono for the third position side by side as they're going to be heading into Raja. That's going to be an interesting one as they think they're going to fall into line here and Tono is going to get the benefit of that. A little bit further back, King David getting shuffled around just a little bit. It wasn't in the, exactly the best spot but he's going to be side by side here with Shelly the Turtle going into the first Lesmo corner. Going to really switch to the left side of the circuit. Back to the inside is going to go Shelly the Turtle and if he can keep it this is a great battle here for position. Somehow keeps it off the gravel. That's the Williams of Anso that's gone off a little bit towards the back. Somehow keeps it all together. And despite some shuffling around, despite some contact into turn one, everything seems to have gone cleanly so far. 
This is the McLaren of Phase Electric. We're along with, I know he's a bit slow on the inside of the track. Not sure what's happened with him there. It's gonna be four cars all bunched up with each other. A McLaren, a Mercedes, and two Aston Martins into Parabolica. This one's gonna be a close one. The McLaren of Phase Electric goes wide. And the three cars are now in front of him as El Majaco sets the fastest lap at 127.5. And a lot of cars coming into the pits. KD35 with five second penalty after speeding into the pit lane. Here's Jose Miguel, he's right uh, getting towards the gearbox here of El Majaco as they go into Raja. A lot of time can be made and lost here. We'll say Majaco's not the kind to make mistakes and oh, Miguel got launched a solid three feet in the air there. That is definitely not good for the underbody of the car. And, oh, it looks like Aero Racing Design has gone off there. And I think, yeah, there's bits and pieces of car scattered everywhere in a virtual safety car. As you can see, there is a whole yard sale of carbon fiber and wing pieces uh, at the exit of the corner. Look about here, yeah, look at the front wing. Completely gone on the Ferrari of Shelley the Turtle. And I wouldn't doubt it if there's a lot of drivers coming in. And Elma Jacko is going to be one of them. Now, what is Elma Jacko coming in for? Has he lost bits and pieces of his front wing as well? I'm not rightly sure where he did. I didn't see any. Is there any damage that he's taken? I'm not entirely sure. But he's going to replace his front wing anyways. And he's going to fall back down the order outside the top ten. Here's Jazer and Zareska side by side into the first corner. And Zareska... Backing off of that one for now, and then taking the shorter route onto the sausage curb. Did very well to kind of avoid any contact. Into Parabolica they go, it's one and two, or four and five rather, side by side to the line. I think Big Pack is gonna make the best of it here and have the DRS. And they're still side by side as they head down the pit straight and into the first corner. Man, they might wanna sort this one out before they hit the braking zone. And it looks like Big Pack is gonna get uh, the benefit there of having the DRS uh, going down the pit straight. Very nicely executed maneuver there, and he gains a position. That was nice. Sleep he has gone and span it round uh, in between uh, on the exit of turns one and two. Not necessarily what you need there whatsoever. Oh, and there's King David. Man, and he's taking a front wing with him as well. And that's very unfortunate as he was having a pretty solid race so far within eight tenths of a second uh, off the back of second place of Jose Miguel, and we are going to have our second virtual safety car of the day. Yellow flag somewhere, that's Shelly the Turtle. Something has happened with him, and he's spun across uh, Raja Corner. We've seen this sector one and two really claim the majority of drivers today in one form or another. That, that section of the track has been very difficult for the drivers so far, and potentially a win. Still 20 laps to go as we got King David who's off in the gravel there, and man, you have to believe, maybe he's just beached the car. Oh, it looks like KD35, he's gone off on exit of Raggia, and there goes Shelly the Turtle as well, spinning around himself. And a full safety car out on track. I believe it's gonna be safety car in this lap, and yes it is, we'll have to see who gets away with what here. There's a bit of a gap here. What's going on with uh, Zareska? Has he just kind of gone off there, but, uh, Interesting one here into the first corner. Dirty Boy Jackson, uh, something happened there. He was ghosting there for a little bit. One, two, three, and four, and five. Ooh, a little bit of contact towards the back. That's Tono and Aero Racing Design. Something has happened with them. Very close to being catastrophic there, but I tell you what, for now, Dirty Boy Jackson has his lead secure as he heads into Raja. Not going to be the cleanest line through, although I tell you what, I think he may have had a better exit there than Jose Miguel. But he's got Jose Miguel breathing down his neck as they head into Parabolica. Is he going to try to lunge for it? He's on the faster tires. Man, this is going to be a close one. Ooh, and Jose Miguel, I think maybe just had a little bit of oversteer right there. Saw him struggle with the car slightly, but he's going to have the slipstream as we head on to the 11th lap of the race. The big pack wants in this as well. But meanwhile, Jose Miguel and Dirty Boy Jackson going to be side by side in the turn number one. This one is going to be close. Somehow no contact was made. Some great racing from both of these drivers so far. Great clean and close racing. That's exactly what we're looking for. Right up to his gearbox here. Is it going to be side by side through Raja? That might be a worse idea than side by side into turn one. We'll have to wait and see and I think no. Jose Miguel is going to play it chill for now. Big pack 
uh, meanwhile, has caught up to this battle for the lead. All three of these drivers have a penalty. Uh, Big Pack having a five seconds. Uh, Ho uh, Dirty Boy Jackson and Jose Miguel both having three seconds. Uh, Dirty Boy Jackson, we know, was off a rather unfortunate circumstance after the contact with El Majaco in turn one in the opening lap. Meanwhile, Aero Racing Design wants in this as well. He is really uh, the best seat in the house at the moment, considering he's the one without the penalty. And he's going to want in this battle as well. You can see Dirty Boy Jackson trying his best uh, to break the toe, switching back and forth all over the track. But it's going to be one, two, three, and four. Going to be exiting Parabolica this time. Jose Miguel, these last two laps have been going really wide on exit of the corner. Big Pac going to be shuffling his way up through the order. We have a yellow flag, and that's Jazer who's gone off. This one is going to be interesting, but we're going to be back under green flag here. And oh, Aero Racing Design almost overtook French is coming. Wow, he's getting pushed right into the grass, and he's going to pass him through the grass. It's going to be three wide going into the first corner. El Majaco up the inside. Contact there between Majaco and Racing Design. Side by side still, and Majaco is going to push himself through there. Oh, and Tono has gone off. Somehow, did he save the car? No, he didn't. French is coming, and Zareska. Both being unfortunately caught up in that. I don't want to say anything as far as putting the blame, but I'm, I, I can't really tell if that was an unsafe re-entry by Tono or it was just he caught oversteer and had bad luck. Meanwhile, Aero Racing Design uh, getting past Big Pack and now El Majaco is as well. And it looks like as far as if we look at the Discord, Zareska's not that happy with Tono's action saying, quote-unquote, when people don't know, they shouldn't hold down the accelerator when they slide out, so they don't come zooming back onto the course, and, uh, well, part of me agrees with that, but part of me also says it's up to Tono to try to save the car and try to get it back on circuit. Now, whether uh, Zaresco wants to argue that that was dangerous re-entry or not, it's going to be up to him. But that adds two more cars to the mix of those who have been DNF'd. And it looks like now, Aero Racing Design hunting down Jose Miguel. Aero Racing Design, mind you, going for at least his second consecutive win here in Wednesday series. So if we look at the Wednesday schedule, yeah, Aero Racing Design has won the previous race at least. I'm not sure about Monaco, didn't get the results from Monaco, but here we go, into the DRS section. He's not gonna have it this time by. It's gonna be a very close one here, not to mention El Majaco wants in on this as well. It's gonna be side by side into Ascari between the two leaders. This one's gonna be close, still side by side. Jose Miguel going off circuit. The Williams of Anso had something happen there. And Jose Miguel, no, and something has happened with Jose Miguel. How has he DNF'd? as he just hit the wall on the inside of the circuit. I believe that's what's happened. No, and so unfortunate there for the McLaren driver. I'm not entirely sure. I saw him in Aero Racing Design, had a bit of contact there. And oh, look at this. Oh, and unbelievable. El Majaco and Aero Racing Design. Aero Racing Design chose to come into the pits later than El Majaco. Majaco picks up a five second time penalty. I believe Aero. So. How long is Anto going to be able to hold off the raging Renault, or should I say Alpine, of Aero Racing Design? And Dirty Boy Jackson. Now, both of these drivers behind them, as well as El Majaco, have been absolutely soaring with pace so far. And look at this. Big Pack's going to overtake El Majaco in the start. Look at this. It's going to be three abreast for second position here. This one probably not going to end well, as to the inside goes Dirty Boy Jackson taking the second spot. Side by side, Big Pack going over the curb, and no, and he's going to get spun around somehow. There. Anto going into the gravel there, and he's got Peter DH along his left side. Side by side into the Lesmo corner, the first one. Very solid line kept by Peter D DRH, and he's taking it around the outside. And oh no, that's the Williams of Anto. Something has happened with him there, and he's gone off into the gravel. Here is El Majaco to the gearbox of Dirty Boy Jackson. Into Ascari they go, and it looks like Majaco having to save the car there. Caught some oversteer, but did a great job 
to keep it under control. Got a 5.2 second gap back to the Mercedes of Tono in fourth. That's going to be enough to hold on to the podium position, I believe. Meanwhile, Aero Racing Design, about a two second gap already, and Majaco going to send it round the right side of Dirty Boy Jackson. Now, is Dirty Boy Jackson going to try to get him back into the corner? The answer is going to be no, but Majaco, a big error going into the first corner, did very well to save the car. Somehow, is going to hold on to position. Uh, you'll catch on to it every once in a while. Let's see if it happens here. And oh no, that's Big Pack. Something has happened to him. And he is off, I'll say, in a terrible, and I mean terrible, part of the circuit. In the center of the track, coming out of the second Lesmo. And that's not what you want to see. Thankfully, nobody else is really on their way through that section of the track. But by goodness, that was dangerous. Oh, and there goes Majaco. Something has happened with El Majaco, and he span it round. What could have possibly happened there? He's going to have the DRS this time by as well. Going to look to the gearbox and switch to the left side as they head down into turn one. And that's exactly what El Majaco needed as he overtakes Tono going into turn one. Now it's a race against the clock for El Majaco to try to build up the gap that he needs in order to secure third position. And now the gap between... Majaco and Tono up to 1.2. Oh, oh no, and Tono's caught the grass! Tono catches the grass in the middle of Parabolica, and that may just be the break that El Majaco needed. Now the gap expanding to over five seconds. Five tenths of a second separate Tono from a podium, and oh no, he's gone across the curb, and that, you'd have to believe, is the amount of luck that El Majaco was hoping for. Now he's got Peter DRH in behind. Peter DRH has five seconds worth of penalty. Tono resetting the track there. Yeah, I caught along to that. But El Majaco, you'd have to believe, after all, is gonna escape with the podium. And it looks like, whoa, what's this? Dirty Boy Jackson has just cut every inch of the track, picked up 10 seconds of time penalty. And, well, that's not gone well at all, has it? Dirty Boy Jackson has just pulled the Sebastian Vettel and completely cut the Redofilo chicane. 13 seconds of time penalty he has. Wouldn't want to throw away a podium now. Hey, what, he might still be able to hold on to it, to be honest. I, I, t I tell you what, that's... This is unbelievable. So, Dirty Boy Jackson has 13 seconds worth of penalties. The gap between him and El Majaco has just escaped 13 seconds is... I, I think Dirty Boy Jackson's gonna walk away with this here. Dirty Boy Jackson is going to escape scot-free. Or is he? It's going to be close at the line. Dirty Boy Jackson crosses the line, but it's going to be Aero Racing Design taking the win. And after an unbelievable turn of events, El Majaco takes third. Dirty Boy Jackson in second. El Majaco picking up five seconds for an unserved time penalty, but after all the drama and all the controversy we have seen so far, it's gonna be Aero Racing Design with his back-to-back -back victory here.